Welcome to 13 Minutes. I'm Paul Goon, and my neighbors need to shut the fuck up. This week, (laughs) I'm on a Zoom call with Shane from Great Falls. What's up, dude? Hey, I'm sorry about your neighbors. That's all right. They're usually quiet. They're super old. They must be having like a fucking rager that I wasn't invited to or something. Oh, so you're bitter. I gotcha. That's understandable. Always. I always am. (laughs) Can't you see it just fucking boiling above my shoulders? It's true. Yes, I see the steam rising. Where's the band from? Where are you guys at? Um, Well, we practice in Seattle. uh, And that's where Damien, the guitarist and uh, singer, lives. I live in Tacoma which is just like a poor man, Seattle. And then uh, our drummer, Nick, um, lives just outside of Portland. Shout out Damien and Nick. Sorry they couldn't be here today. Shame. Is it always raining in Seattle, like they say? Is it really always? That's a great, that's a great question. Uh, it is not. Um, it's just very, uh, it's very gloomy for many months. And it does rain often, but it's actually not even in the top 20 rainiest cities, I believe, in the country. Can you tell me every one of the top 20 rainiest cities uh, in the country right now? Do you you want them in alphabetical order or ascending or descending? Oh, you're ready. Okay, never mind. I don't want to know. I'm from Youngstown. (laughs) Youngstown. Youngstown, Ohio. Good old yellow. Well, you know, I'm I'm from from Northwest Indiana originally, so... Oh, okay. Cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. So we weren't that far apart at one point. We understand. We understand the uh, the Midwest. Oh, and God. It's, and its vibes. The horror. The horror. <laughs> Youngstown, is that part of the Rust Belt? They say it is. I don't know if we actually are, but edgy people say it is. Mm, gotcha. A little controversy. A little Rust Belt controversy. When did you guys start Great Falls? Do you remember what year? Um, well, so, you know, it's a little hazy. So I joined um, this band Playing Enemy in 2001. I moved from Indiana to Seattle to join that. And Damien was in that band. Can I interrupt um, you for one second? You can. Just, just one. Okay, sorry about that. Um, in 2001, I was in the first grade uh i uh i was not i did not join i did not join playing enemy when i was in the first grade um, all right so sorry for I joined playing it i joined playing enemy when i was 20 okay so uh i think i may be a little older than you doesn't matter and yet even though i'm uh significantly older than you i also look significantly older than you who saw that coming Quite, quite ironic. I actually, if um, we're being honest, I think you look quite young for however fucking oh, really you. old you are. Yeah, I realize oh, that you're you. ancient, but you don't look ancient. Well, Damien's much more ancient, so okay, and he looks it. So. <laughs> um, so he takes care of it for both of us. Um, but uh, so I joined this band, Playing Enemy, in 2001 with Damien and this drummer, Andrew Gormley. And, um, that went on until 2006, we broke up, but Damien and I just kept playing together. Um, we did sort of a noise project for years and, um, after the noise project sort of like 
you know, it's just fucking noise, man. Like it's fun. It was fun. And we like try to do a bunch of interesting stuff and it certainly has like helped us, you know, going forward. But at one point we just kind of wanted to start playing music again. Um, like, you know, actually structured songs. So whenever we started sort of like writing structured songs again, we decided to change the name to Great Falls. And I think that was about 2009-ish, 10-ish. We decided to do that. I think our first our first show, um, which was just Damien and I and like samples as, as drums, we just like created this percussion out of stuff and like put it in looping pedals. It was very terrible. Um, that was, I think, 2010. And, and uh, then after maybe not even a year, we, we got a drummer because we realized this was kind of a, a scam doing what we were doing. We, we ended up with a drum machine. We actually put out a whole record with the drum machine. Oh, I've um, heard it. I heard it. It's on Bandcamp, oh, isn't yeah, it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then we decided, you know, to get a real drummer – Played with that real drummer for like, you know, t- uh, over 10 years um, and uh, had a falling out um, sort of halfway through writing this new record um, and then hit up our friend Nick, who we've known since playing Enemy Days, and uh, he joined the band. And here we are. So speaking yeah. of playing Enemy Days. My friend Mark, a.k.a. Sasquatch012 from the Coalesce chat board, says yeah. he remembers meeting you when you played, excuse me, <clears throat> when you opened for Converge as playing Enemy. He wants to say what's up, and also, well, you already told us about the transition from playing Enemy to Great Falls just a minute ago, but that's what he wanted to know. Uh, Yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Yeah. Um, well, I would, I would remember Sasquatch 012 because, um, I, uh, I was on the coalesce board when, um, when I decided to join playing enemy. So, uh, I was a big, in fact, m- a couple months before I moved. Do you remember uh, meeting him at the show when you <laughs> opened for Converge? Do you remember? Which, I don't know if I remember that one particularly. In and, Cleveland. And I apologize. Cleveland, Ohio. Oh, in Cleveland. Uh, I do remember playing the Cleveland show, um, but that's it. I don't know if I remember uh, meeting him specifically. I'm sorry, oh. Sasquatch 012. That's all right. Um, I apologize. Um, you should up. ask him. You should ask him if he remembers a user on there named Cough Drop, who I still talk to, and who remembers every single thing that ever happened on that fucking goddamn board. It's very weird. Shout out Cough Drop. I will. I will ask. I will ask if he remembers. <laughs> Please do. Um, yeah, that was my first tour. That was my that was uh, my first tour consisted of um, opening for uh, Converge on the Jane Doe tour and also 9-11. So it was some stuff happened. Converge is fucking raw, dude. Fucking raw. I, I've been jamming them actually every day this week after work because it's just been that kind of week. Uh, yeah. Oh, they're God. like the anti uh they're like the anti Taliban in a lot of ways. Because uh because they made the tour better and the Taliban made the tour worse. So well, not really the Taliban, but you understand. We don't need to get into it. We don't need to get into geopolitics here. You only have like 13 minutes. Oh, I completely understand. <laughs> is this the best band you've ever been in? Uh it is. Um but, um, yeah, I mean, big time for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I was, I was in like high school bands and then I wasn't doing anything. And then I decided to be in playing enemy, which is definitely a big step up for me, for me. Uh, cause you know, Damien was in, uh, kiss goodbye and nine iron spitfire and Andrew had been in kiss goodbye and Rorschach. And so like, you know, these bands that I really respected, so I was like, oh, well, this is amazing. Um, but, you know, 20 years later, I feel like, you know, Damien and I kind of feel like we sort of found the best kind of version of sort of what we've always kind of wanted to do. So um, it's very, you know, it's 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 an odd thing because so many um, bands that are still doing stuff in their 40s after they try to do stuff in their 20s, 
it's usually pretty pretty shitty and um or at least not like if not shitty it's definitely like sort of a a a, a sort of a pale version of maybe what they did best in their 20s and um luckily we were just not very good in our 20s so we had a couple decades to improve which is nice so besides that what are some of the key differences uh between being in a band when you're a young man and being in a band as now as i said earlier an ancient man um, I mean, you know, definitely there's a lot of um, uh, unrealistic sort of expectation of what a a record is going to do. Um, you know, I think I was, uh, I mean, myself, like, you know, again, I was sort of spoiled because I didn't have to do anything. And all of a sudden I'm like in a band with people that I, you know, deeply respect and like opening for bands that I love. And, um, and I think that my lack of like paying dues sort of, uh, maybe hampered my understanding of, you know, it's not that I didn't work hard and, and, you know, Andrew and, and Damien, you know, being a little older and already having established careers in a lot of this sort of, you know, very niche underground stuff. Uh, you know, they had, had, paid plenty of, of dues and they deserved um you know to sort of reap the benefits of that and i was like sure i'll reap those benefits let's do this i can't wait to reap these benefits that i don't deserve in any way um but you know i think that i think that both damien and i would say that during playing enemy we kind of um just had you know a very ambitious idea of what we wanted to do without sort of understanding how to get there without sort of being, you know, sort of like just biting off more than we could chew. And I think that great falls has sort of, we started as sort of an anti playing enemy because I think playing enemy tried to do so much for at least one of our records that we wanted to start very simple and, you know, like, you know, kind of a punk rock recording and punk rock songwriting. And, you know, just like, if you can't do it live, don't put it on record. And and we just sort of like stop, started there and then just kept building, building to the point where we're just like, well, we can play, you know, we can play these songs and still be sort of a noisy, um, you know, punk rock band, but kind of bring back some of the things that, you know, make the record a little bit more of an enjoyable listen, which was a big, a big um, sticking point for me for a long time. Cause I, I did have this kind of thought in my head, like, well, you know, why cheat people? Why make people come to a show? That's not, um, that's not going to sound just like the record, but you know, the big difference for us is that, um, even if we played ex everything exactly like it sounds on the record, we play like, you know, shitty bars, like no offense to the bars we play. We love them, but like, you know, we could have the most professional. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry. Shout out to the yes. bars you play. Thank you, bars. Thank you for allowing us to do such. Um, we appreciate it. And, um, and uh, every bar that has a uh, delicious NA beer that uh, we can buy with the drink ticket. It's good, even though I'm just the only one who uses it. Anyway, um, but, you know, we decided at one point, like, there's no, um, even, in, you know, unless we're playing, like, uh, you know, like, really nice festivals or something, or, you know, we're playing, like, uh, key, you know, uh, uh, arenas, like, we're never going to be able to replicate that sound. And we're still going to sound, I mean, for your listeners who don't know, we're, like, a pretty noisy band. And I, you know, like, I do not play great live, you know, like, we're just kind of just running around and being, being dummies. So, you know, like, there comes a point where it's just like, even in ideal situations, no one's going to really know what's going on all the time. So, you know, so we kind of like put, you know, our focus on, you know, nuance and, and, um, and like sort of little additions on the record. And then when we show up, you know, on stage, we just kind of throw stuff around and, and that seems fine. Works for us. It's okay. 
we're happy with it. Yeah, I did see that there was one review that said something about emotion over form. Is that what it said? You recall? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't want to belittle that guy's opinion, but I was like, you know what? This is the perfect form of emotion right here. (laughs) <laughs> there, there is no either or this is the balance you know what i mean how do you can how do you serious how do you convey yes. such emotion and such feeling and force through music through speakers even if i played it through my shitty phone it makes me want to get up and start hitting you know what i mean Thank you how much. how do you do it uh, um I, I don't I don't know I I'm just, I'm just glad it works I mean you know I'll have to you know I can't really we can't really talk about how the record sort of has that visceral impact without sort of tipping our hat to um to Scott Evans who engineered it and wait a minute we it. need to tip our hat to the record in the first place because we didn't even officially hold on hold on hold on oh yeah, yeah please let's t- yeah. let's let's take a step back here we never even officially okay. announced the record dropped. Two or three days ago? Where are we at? Uh, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago. Great Falls right released in. Objects Without Pain, the greatest fucking record you ever fucking heard in your fucking life. Wow. Just came out. Wow, that's that's quite a hype, man. Thank you. Tell them. Tell them about it. Um, it's it's an album of eight songs, and it's and it sounds good out of your iPhone speaker. It does. It does. It, it makes me very angry, and I know it's supposed to. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, you know, we just we really wanted to, um, you know, we just had this sound in our head, and we sort of talked to. And Scott had had done our last record, but um, you know, to be fair, a lot of that was sort of steered by um, production wise was steered by our drummer that we weren't, you know, particularly happy with. And, um, and this time, you know, Scott kind of knew what, would you say that, would you say that he doesn't get a shout out? So I think that, you know, we just, we wanted to be big with this record. We really wanted to, I think that the one thing is that I feel like we had sort of played it safe with a couple of records. And I think that our sort of thought was let's do a record where if we fail, it's like a, f- a big fail, you know, we sort of like, let's try the record that when people hear it, it's either a success or people are like, what, this is so self-indulgent and long and trying to do too much. And like, you know, was when, you know, starting a record out with like a nine minute song was, you know, very purposeful. Um, and also starting a, a nine minute song that doesn't really kick in for like four minutes or something, you know, but it does, um, but it does. I know, I know, but it also does. Yes, it does. Um, I mean, it, yes, it, it's sort of this, I mean, our, the thing with that is just, we wanted to like, sort of be like, well, if you don't want to stick around for a few minutes to hear like what we sound like, that's fine. But like, if you do, like this is kind of what we're doing so we kind of just wanted to be a little more you know i don't want to say like you know we're like fuck the critics you know nothing like that we're not we're not people like that at all you know we're we're doing this for us now like nothing like that but um but it was sort of an attempt to just sort of be like well let's let's be a little more ambitious and risky and sort of decide um that you know, we'll just give it a shot and see if people dig it or if it's too much or whatever. And I think there was, you know, multiple, multiple times where uh, collaborators or Scott or anyone was just like, ah, this might be, you know, this might be a little too much for like one record, but, um, but it seems, you know, seems to work out. So. Very well. Very well. With it. Oh, well, thank you. If I had to give a rating, and I could break it down if you want, but I'm not going to because we don't have time for that, so don't tell me you want me to. I would give it a solid 9 out of 10, only because we're not delving into any fucking 0. .4, 0. .5, 0. .6. 
mm-hmm. and because nobody should really get a perfect score. Mm. Uh, I, you know, kind of, you know, once again, thing we won't get into, I just can't give you a perfect score, but you're going to get the that's best fine. score I can give you. And that's a nine out of 10 Thank right there, you. my friend. Well, well, that's perfect. I appreciate that. If you're watching this interview, I know that means you've already listened to objects without pain because it means you're a great falls fan and you know why the fuck you're here. If you haven't heard it yet, because you don't have a good excuse, but you have one listen to it. Hey, nobody's that busy. Go listen to Objects Without Pain <laughs> now. Like, I mean, now. Like, turn this off. You've already seen enough. Go listen to it. Where can people see you live? You guys have shows coming up. I know you do with my boys we in do. Bedtime Magic. And I think I might have saw a yes. Miracle Blood on a flyer. Miracle Blood? Uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. We're playing oh with them, too. Oh, my God. I think, we're playing, with, oh, I think we're playing with Miracle Blood and Bedtime Magic on one show. Hey, listen. If you are a human being, where's that? Is that going to be in Boston? Um, it's in Massachusetts. Um, let me see if I can find out. That is Boston, right? To... Like all, all of Massachusetts is Boston. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I forgot about that. Oh, yeah, yes, okay. indeed. Well, if you're um, a human being in, in Massachusetts, on what day is that show? Do you know? Uh, I'm I'm finding out right now. I uh, should um I should already know since we're doing this tour in like two weeks, but I'm. I'm not great with anything in the world. Um, it is. Give me a minute. Wait, is this? Are we burning up? Are we burning up time here? You can you can just edit this part out, right? <laughs> Dude, I can do whatever I want. That's the best thing about being. That's true. Yeah, that's the best thing about having You're like your a own god. Show. I am. I swear. The only time I'm in complete <laughs> control in this whole entire universe is when I'm running this show. Yeah, I found it. It is um it is a Monday. Love it. Who doesn't love a Monday? It is 10 uh 1009. So that's soon. October 9th at O'Brien's. That is a very Boston sounding name. Um O'Brien's with it's us, Great Falls, Bedtime Magic, Miracle Blood, and Don't Grow Old, who are also very good. Shout out, shout out, and fucking shout out. Bedtime Magic also just released an album. This isn't about them. Yeah, same day, two days ago. Yeah, but they are our friends and we love them. Shout out. Yeah, shout out. Do you have to be smart to write songs? No. Oh, no, no, no. Good Lord, no. It's funny you should say that because we have, uh, because our stuff's pretty mathy, you know, like... I think we try really hard to not be um, what I think math core has turned turned into, which is a lot of kind of noodling and sort of showing off. And we try to like write our sort of mathy parts so you can kind of understand them. But we play a lot of like fives and sevens. and um, And I think that a lot of people tend to think that since we write songs like that we're like highly intelligent music guys we don't know fucking anything about music at all and we are the other day uh, damien and i were at practice and we're talking about something and what we're talking about if you just like her you know read the transcription it would sound like we are you know fairly knowledgeable about music and kind of bright and then the whole time i'm talking i'm just like trying to untangle this chord and i'm just like what are we doing with our lives like we are monkeys in here um so we're pretty dumb um and we just happen to uh like um songs that have like weird time signatures but but we don't we don't like Danny just happens to like write stuff. And he's like, what is that? Four, four. I'm like, that's like 11. You weirdo. Like, what are you talking about? So <laughs> to, that's just how it to works. him, to him. It's just normal four, four. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We, we, we always do that. So. Are instruments supposed to be covered in blood after you finish a set? Uh, preferably. I mean, Every every show should every, at the end of every show you should either have some sort of blood or be like 
exhausted to the point where you can't really do anything. Um, so you're saying that's that kind of our, our goal. Musicians who stand still that, on maybe, stage need to move. My opinion of musicians who stand on the stage is not negative. It's just not how I understand um, a performance. So Yeah, I've been thinking I, about I, that lately. A performance as a whole. There's a lot that goes yeah. into that, huh? I mean, I think that, you know, I, I don't like... I don't like bands that um, are necessarily super performative necessarily, you know, sort of have like, you know, like those guys that like spin their bases around their bodies and shit. Like, I hate that stuff. Um, I feel like bands but, like um, that put on too much of a show, like that ghost and shit. It's like a gimmick, like their music yeah. fucking sucks dicks. But yeah. They put yeah, on a crazy like show that. like that to get people to go to it. Yeah, and I mean, like, I don't, you know, there's certain things, like, I don't, I'm not really a big fan of bands that don't play with chords, you know, like bands that just have uh, wireless setups. I think wireless setups are kind of cheating. Um, but, um, but you know, I, I think that you should probably be, um, I mean, you know, it's it's the two things, too, because Damien and I have played for 20 years and the majority of shows we've played have been to not a lot of people. Um, and I, I think know the that, feeling. I know the feeling. Yeah. I mean, that's just that's the you know, that's just the the way that being in a band is. Right. And, you know, early on, um, you know, we sort of just had this thing where it's like if there's five people there you know, it's not their fault. More people didn't show up. And so why, why put on a worse show? Because there aren't that many people there. And I think that that's just been sort of like my guiding principle for playing this whole time is like, you know, when I would go see a show and, and when I was like a teenager and it was a band that no one came to see, no one gave a shit about. And they still like went crazy or like still were acting like they were playing in front of like 200 people. I felt glorious. You know, it was like, I, it was like, I got to see a, a special thing that no one else got to see. Right. And, you know, I think we kind of just approach our shows like that. Like, you know, we don't want people who, who show up to be like, Oh yeah, it was fine. There was no one there and they just kind of like stood around. Like we want people to be like, yeah, I saw those guys in front of nine people and they went nuts. You know, that's sort of like that's sort of what we value. So um yeah, I mean, you know, blood and um you know, bruises and things like that like it's not a th thing that i necessarily feel is or and it's definitely not something that i think we probably you know boast about as much as we could maybe like do you know promote but you know there's definitely times where you know i've gotten pretty hurt or um or you know there's been some instrument that got broken or something and I, you know, I would just, I'd rather do that with my life for some reason than just kind of sit there and like, just play, play those tunes faithfully. That just doesn't really appeal to me, you know? So. We're running out of time. We only have a couple minutes left. I'm going through the interview here, trying to figure out what's the best last thing. Cause there's, mm. you'll never know. The fans will never know. There's a whole interview here. You know what I mean? Look at that. We never get through it. I don't make, you know, I don't make it a point to get through it all. I do want to talk about that sick ass fucking RoboCop cover. Okay. Oh, wow. That came out of nowhere. Listen, dude, RoboCop is one of the hardest fucking movies of all time. Love it. That is so badass. And then I find out you guys did on like a full on uh like punk or like i don't know rock and roll cover of uh yeah. a bit uh, a, a 
music. I don't know what you would call it. From it's like I think it's I think it's a RoboCop battle theme. So we found the RoboCop battle theme, and then we just did our own our own version of it. Oh, okay, so, okay, yeah. To be specific, it's the RoboCop battle theme that was escaping my so. memory. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, I, I you know how do you know when it's time to do a cover? How do you know? That came from um, usually almost covers are almost always necessity for something, and that came from our friend Andrew um andrew bonazelli who shout um, out yeah big time uh who um is from ohio i believe originally um uh he um asked uh he was talking to me about a book he was putting out and the book was sort of a a satirical look at action movies and he was thinking about doing a soundtrack and I suggested doing a soundtrack that was all covers of like action movie themes and songs and whatever. And um, he thought that was a good idea. So he asked us if we would do one. I, I don't remember exactly how we fell on RoboCop, but I remember hearing it on YouTube and being like, we could, we could do a, we could do a a, a, a a version of this and it'd be not bad. And, you know, I listen back to it now and I kind of wish we had sort of, I mean, we put a lot of time into just making it a thing because it's super long, but um, I feel that, you know, we could have put a little more time into making it uh, better, but, but listening back to it, I'm just like, man, I hate that the RoboCop battle theme is better than huge chunks of original music that we've done. Yeah, you know what? I actually take back my previous statement about not giving anything a 10. The RoboCop battle theme cover is a solid, <laughs> solid 10 out of fucking 10. That wow. is a... wow. So thank you. So that is funny. I, I never think about that song at all. I don't even remember like it just sort of seems to have like we like fell asleep and then woke up one day and elves had made that with our instruments. It's very weird. Um, but... Shout out to the elves! Shout out to Santa yeah, Claus! Out... Christmas yeah, is shout coming out. To the RoboCop battle theme elves! Shout out to RoboCop himself! Shout out to the creators yeah. of RoboCop! Always. Yeah, I'm Paul Goon. He is Shane from Great Falls. Make sure you go check out Objects Without Pain. Listen to the RoboCop battle theme cover, and go catch a Great Falls show at their next upcoming poor run how long East is it Coast, yeah it's uh it's 11 consecutive shows so october 5th through uh october 15th go to a show. october Please. great falls you your mom your dad your whole family yeah. oh, your entire show. family your pets Bring your pets. That was 13 minutes.